So now that we've studied uh, reactant stoichiometry, we're going to be discussing limiting reactants and percentage yield. So for most exercises in lab, uh, not all of the reactant is going to be used up to create product. Uh, it's hard to get exactly the right number of atoms so that the two uh, or more reactants can react completely and completely transform uh, into product. So there's always going to be one reactant that limits the reaction known as the limiting reactant and this is the one that has less than the ideal amount of uh, reactant going into the chemical reaction for uh, optimal production and the other reactant that is the reactant that has a bunch left over is known as the excess reactant. For example, if we were to burn carbon in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide, if you started off with 5 moles of carbon and 10 moles of oxygen, you wouldn't get somewhere in between 5 and 10 moles of carbon dioxide. You would only get 5 moles of carbon dioxide because at some point you would run out of carbon to burn. So carbon would be the limiting reactant and oxygen would be the excess reactant because you would have 5 moles of oxygen left over after all of the 5 moles of carbon had been burned. So now that we know the terminology we're going to work on figuring out which one will be the limiting reactant and which one will be the excess reactant for any given reaction. So let's take the example of quartz, which is silicon dioxide reacting with hydrofluoric acid, which has the formula HF. They react to form silicon, uh, tetrafluoride, and water. Now let's say we're given six moles of hydrofluoric acid and 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide. The way you determine which one is the limiting reactant and which one is the excess is you see which one can make the most of a product. So for example, silicon tetrafluoride. So with the six moles of hydrofluoric acid, you use a mole ratio to determine how much silicon would be used. Again, by using the ratio of the coefficients of the two compounds. So for each mole of hydrofluoric acid, or for each four moles, rather, because of the four in front of the hydrofluoric acid, you make one mole of silicon tetrafluoride. Which means that with six moles of hydrofluoric acid, you can make 1.5 moles of silicon tetrafluoride. And you repeat the same process with the 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide. So you take the molar ratio again. In this case, it's a 1 to 1, which is really simple. It's 1 mole silicon tetrafluoride for every mole of silicon dioxide. You cancel the units to make sure you're doing it right, and you end up with a possible 4.5 moles of silicon tetrafluoride. So, because you can make more silicon tetrafluoride with the 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide than you can with the 6 moles of hydrofluoric acid. The silicon tetrafluoride is the excess reactant because you will completely react away all of your uh, hydro hydrofluoric acid yeah, and end up with only 1.5 moles of silicon tetrafluoride despite the fact that with your other reactant you can make an extra three moles. Alright, so the maximum amount of let's say silicon tetrafluoride that we formed in the last problem would be 1.5 moles and this would be what is known as the theoretical yield of the reaction. That is, 
this is the maximum amount of product, in this case silicon tetrafluoride, that you could get from the given uh, molar amounts of reactant that you put in. However, most reactions don't get to this uh, theoretical yield because uh, they take many side reactions or the reaction doesn't go to completion. That is, there are little pockets of reactant that have yet to meet each other and react. So what chemists measure is once they've completed a reaction and they've gotten, you know, to this product, they will often measure it out and find out, you know, how many moles or grams of product they've created. And this is what's known as the actual yield. Now the difference between the actual yield and the theoretical yield is very important for chemists in order for them to measure the efficiency of their reactions. And the way chemists measure this efficiency is through a measurement you know, called, to no surprise, uh, percentage yield. Now the percentage yield is the ratio of the actual yield to the theoretical yield and because this way you usually end up with a decimal somewhere close to one, they multiply this by a hundred so that they can get a percentage. So now I'll do a percentage yield example problem just so you guys get a clearer idea of what I'm talking about. So chlorobenzene, which is C6H5Cl, is used in industry to create a lot of consumer products and it is created by mixing benzene, which is C6H6, with chlorine gas in excess. So you don't have to worry about the chlorine limiting the reaction or affecting the percentage yield at all. And as a byproduct, it also creates hydrochloric acid. So for the purpose of this example, we'll use some fake experimental data. We'll say that we started off with 36.8 grams of benzene and ended up with uh, 38.8 grams of chlorobenzene. We already know the actual yield, that is the 38.8 grams of chlorobenzene given to us. Now we have to take steps to find the theoretical yield if we're going to calculate the percentage yield because it's a ratio of the actual to theory. So the theoretical yield is a simple uh, mass to mass uh, stoichiometry problem. So you start off with your given, which is 36.8 grams of, I'll just write C6H6 uh, uh, times its molar mass so that you can later use the uh, molar ratio. So that's 78.12 grams for each mole. I'm just going to abbreviate to save space. Now you use the ratio of the two, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So for each mole of benzene, you get one mole of chlorobenzene. And finally, you multiply by the molecular mass of chlorobenzene in order to get the expected yield. So the molar mass of chlorobenzene is 112 0.56 grams for each mole of chlorobenzene. Once again, the moles cancel with the moles, moles with moles, grams with grams, and you end up with grams over here at the end. And then once you do all the final math, you get an expected value of 53.0 grams of chlorobenzene. So now that we have a theoretical yield and an actual yield, we can calculate the percentage yield. Remember, the percentage yield is actual over theoretical times 100. In this case, that would be 38.8 over 53 times 100, or 73.2 percent.